Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Something's not right. Hold on. <laughs> Goodbye. This is why the camera angle's different. I got a new, got a new standing desk. Look, look at how high up it goes. Holy crap. Hey, it's still not done, by the way. Hold on. Just hang on a second. Cool. God, it's even too- I'm standing right now. Am I that short? This seems a bit better. Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back, finally, to another video. Do you like the new camera angle? New standing desk is kind of cool. It has been about two weeks now since Steel Wool dropped the first gameplay teaser trailer for their upcoming Ruin DLC for Security Breach. I'm sure everyone else has already made their videos about it. But you haven't seen me analyze it. So that is exactly what we are going to be doing today, taking an in-depth look at the gameplay trailer for Ruin. It's only a minute long, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to stretch this out to a 20 minute long analysis. So if you're looking forward to Ruin, don't forget to scroll down, tickle that sub button, and frankly, let's hop right into it. I will be pausing every now and then. I'm not going to play it in full. I've already done that. I've already reacted to that. If you want to see my reaction to the trailer, that'll be linked down below. But now let's hop into it. Gregory's going to say some lines, but we're not going to focus on that just yet. Instead, we got a crazy new environment to take a look at. This is the entrance to the pizza plex. You can see the come back soon sign. This is where we exit out to get the 6 a.m. ending. And based off this one shot alone, we can already assume that this DLC takes place a long, long time after the main events of the main game. We can see the entirety of the entrance is boarded up, as well as a whole bunch of what appears to be newspapers plastered across the front, you know, giant glass of the entrance. There's construction outside, there's construction inside, there's graffiti inside as well, some boxes boxes, a ladder that wasn't there in the main game. It's daytime as well. You can see some foliage outside. So a lot of details that indicate this takes place a long time after main game security breach, which does lead to the question, how exactly did Gregory survive for this long? Is he a robot? That's why he's able to survive. Who freaking knows? This is also where we get our first good shot of the brand new protagonist named Cassie. She appears to be some sort of friend or maybe even relative of Gregory, but we do know they're very close because why else would Gregory call her and not like the cops? But from the shot, she appears to be a brunette which is a very interesting detail because a lot of people assumed Cassie was going to be a, a blonde, which is what led many people to believe she was in some form or way connected to Vanessa or maybe even Elizabeth, but no, she's brunette. But the name Cassie is still very interesting because it appears to be a mix of both Cassidy, the spirit possessing Golden Freddy, as well as Charlie, the spirit possessing uh, the puppet, as well as Henry's daughter. If that actually means anything, who freaking knows? It could just be Scott messing with us because he loves to do that with names. But anyways, let's move on to the next couple shots. Cassie, I where we can see all the lights in the pizza plex are turned off. There's, once again, a whole bunch of graffiti, some even more construction vehicles, a forklift right here. So once again, playing into the fact that, yeah, this takes place a long, long time after the main events of the of security breach, which is pretty interesting. A lot of people assumed it was going to take place, like, right after whichever ending this follows, which we will get into. But with all the construction and the lights being turned off and the graffiti... I feel like this is really trying to signal this takes place a long time after the main game. Next up, we're going to shot at the kitchen in ruins as well as a little drinking bird right here themed around Glamrock Chica. A lot of Glamrock Chica imagery with this DLC, which is pretty interesting. Of course, we have this. We have Chica Chowder, uh, Shattered. Ruined Chica was in the first teaser poster we got for the DLC. Really makes you wonder why there is so much imagery of Chica. Does she have some deeper meaning? I know some people kind of want this to be a choose your own guardian type DLC. Do we think at some point Chica will join our side? But I'd love to know your thoughts. Why do you think there's so much imagery going on with Glamrock Chica? I'm very still curious about Chica Chowder. Probably some brand new location, some sort of brand new restaurant we're going to explore. Maybe originally it was in some off-limit area in the main game, but we can access it now here. I don't know. I believe this is actually a brand new location. I saw someone point out this was uh, one of these scrapped hallways that you could traverse that kind of linked the larger areas. So if that is true, that's going to be interesting. Once again, maybe they're going to bring back some 
areas that weren't fully developed for the main game, they're going to bring them back in the DLC. We do see later on that areas we originally accessed in the main game, we aren't able to access now. So I wonder if it's going to be a bit of a flip-flop between some areas we used to be able to access we can't anymore, and some areas we weren't able to access we can now access. Now right here, this is behind the kind of snack areas inside the main atrium. We can tell because of the conveyor belt right here. And we can also see the wet floor bots. They're freaking back. They're not dead. Thank God. If there's one character that needed to come back in Ruin, it was absolutely the wet floor bots, the Pat Pats. And I do know Gregory's saying some stuff, but right now I want to focus on the environments, the shots before we get to his dialogue, but we will go back and analyze that. Don't worry. What's left of it? Couple shots of Monty Golf. Couple shots of the main superstar, like, Glamrock Gifts area inside the entrance. Pretty basic stuff here. Monty's golf is going to be pretty messed up, dare I say ruined, but, you know, we were kind of expecting that with oh, ruin. Not much to talk about with those areas. Right here, though, you can see this leads to the security office, but it is blocked off now. Once again, some areas we used to be able to go to, maybe we can't go to anymore. More graffiti, knocked over benches. Yeah, not God, looking good in Monty out. Golf. This is one of the, like, Utilidors areas where we get chased by Monty. I don't know if that's the exact hallway we're looking at, but once again, Utilidors blocking our way with these helpy boxes, not doing, not being so helpful helpy, blocking our way. Daycare, what's interesting right here, this device is the cam station. We're going to see a lot of it later on in the teaser, but right now let's focus on the daycare, because it too is in Say it with me now, it's in ruin. <laughs> Who would have thought? You can see all the panels from the play structures have been knocked over. The Freddy decor decoration thing, that's been knocked over. The carpet is all scratched up. Another panel of Monty's head falling down, another panel from the construction play areas. This place is in complete ruins. We're going to see the ruined daycare attendant later on. But all these shots just go to show how messed up the Pizzaplex is. It is going to be completely destroyed. Keep that in mind. This appears to be uh, based off these shapes. Originally, I thought this was the uh, like sewer segment where we go up here and right up here is the, the staff bot silo. But based off these like ice cream cone shaped decorations, I feel like this is Chica's Bakery. Yeah, you can also see some checkerboard pattern up here. It seems like it might be Chica's Bakery, or it might be the sewers. Again, I'm not entirely sure. Either way, it just goes to show how ruined this Pizzaplex is now. Another shot of the entrance with some very interesting uh, graffiti right here. You can see right here it says, Close Forever, as well as a purple heart. Now, I think a lot of the, of the graffiti is just due to trespassers, you know, vandalizing the, the now-closed Pizzaplex. But I do think these two stick out to me in particular because Vanny did use purple spray paint up in her hideout in Fazer Blast, and this yellow is the color of Afton, but I honestly, it's silly to think Afton going around spray painting like these cryptic messages on the wall, like it's freaking bending the ink machine. So it could very well just be more vandalism happening during the place, but there is a very, very strong correlation between you know, uh, conflicting patterns and conflicting colors, opposite colors with Ruin. We saw it on Steel Wool's site uh, with the, like, purple and green, I think, Steel Wool logo. So they're playing into those opposite colors a lot. And I'm curious to see if this is also playing into that pattern. Uh, or it could just be funny spray paint. Because, again, trespassers. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, to round out this shot, this is, of course, the entrance. These are where the elevators are. You can see some of the carpet is being ripped up, some boxes, presumably uh, presumably moving out all the items. You can see the photo booth that used to be here is no longer there. Right here, we have the inside of Chica's Bakery, actually. This is the Car Carl the Cupcake that is out near the conveyor belts, out near kind of behind the countertops where all the workers are. And now that Gregory stopped blabbing on, let's go back and let's actually listen to what he has to say. Cassie. I'm trapped here at the pizza plex or what's left of it. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to go into Is it ruined? Here, but you've got to help me out. Probably could explain Save a bit. Me, though. Cassie, please. It's so dark down here. So most of Gregory's dialogue is just him being a little whining brat. <laughs> Whoa, boo hoo, Cassie. Come help me, I got myself stuck down here, now I'm throwing you into the mix. So, probably the two most interesting things that he says are, number one, uh, her name, Cassie, obviously. Number two, the fact that he says, I'm trapped down here. Please. It's so dark down here. Or it's, it's so dark down here. 
The only time we really go down somewhere is in the Afton ending. Also, the Afton ending is one of the endings where the building collapses in on itself. It's not completely destroyed as we can see here, but it definitely has a lot of damage done to it which I can only assume was because it collapsed in during that ending. And there's a few other details we're going to touch upon that that uh, give more evidence to the Afton ending being the canon ending that the DLC is going to follow. But now that we're all done with these panning shots, now we actually get into the gameplay itself, starting off with Cassie hiding behind a corner from the brand new ruined Roxanne Wolf. Very interesting brand new appearance for Roxanne. Looks like she has a brand new endoskeleton skull because that is not what her endoskull looks like in the main game. A lot of people are assuming this is her trying to piece herself back together to make herself look more beautiful again. I think that's pretty sweet. I don't know if that's actually canon, but that's my head canon right now because Roxanne, that's definitely something Roxanne would want to do. But we are in, if you look closely, the Glam Rock Salon. You can see the scissors right here, the Roxanne Raceway uh, flag poster, the chairs and mirrors where you actually get your hair done. Once again, another area we can go back to. And of course, Roxanne is near this area. I wonder if this is the first time we encounter her because it looks like she's still kind of on the hunt. How she kind of like sniffs around, looks around a bit. Then we got this brand new device, which is very important. No clue what it's called. Uh, I don't have any fancy name for it. I'm just going to call it our FAS device. <laughs> we pick up this FAS device. A lot of people are trying to find where this location is. I'd assume it looks like based on how Cassie kind of like uses the scroll wheel. And also we have the press E to collect. I didn't even notice that, uh, frankly. It looks like she she's kind of like toying around with it. Like, what the heck does this thing do? You know, so I think this is a brand new area probably underground somewhere just based off the walls and how destroyed all the boxes are and the tools probably some area we're not supposed to go to as a customer at the pizza plex uh, and this is probably very early on because we use this fast device a lot throughout the trailer which we're going to see while i'm on this frame i will point out uh what cassie's wearing i don't think it's too important but she's got a red sweater on with a purple undershirt she's got a very pretty bracelet i will say and some very pretty green nail polish if i re remember correctly i think the only other character in the fnaf franchise that has nail polish is vanessa she had those purple nails though i actually ooh, i don't know if they were in the final game if they are i'll put up a picture but they were definitely in that security breach trailer but I wonder if there's some correlation. And once again, that green and purple imagery. Oh my gosh. Cassie has green nails. Vanessa has purple nails. Green and purple goes back to Security Breach TV. There is some connection here with those colors. I do not think it is a coincidence now. I'm gonna sound like a mad theorist uh, that Charlie's wristband was the green wristband. And Cassie, which has a very similar name to Cassidy and Charlie, has green nail polish. Vanessa has purple nail polish purple guy the freaking purple guy anyways moving on what we got up next the endos are back in an area they weren't in the original game if you look closely you can see i will move my camera so you can see <laughs> right here this is the superstar superstore gift shop outside of the daycare you can see right here it's all boarded up now this is the hallway where you would go to the daycare theater now the door to the gift shop is actually closed as you can see right here right? The gate, the door is down. It's also all boarded up with caution tape, do not cross tape. We do see in a later shot, we can go in there. So how exactly we get in there? Do we use the FAS device? We will see us be able to open doors with it uh, later on in the trailer, but it's very interesting. Again, more areas right down this hallway and in the daycare and the gift shop, areas that we could go to originally in the main game, but can't anymore or are restricted to going to in some form and we have to find a way around it we got the flashlight back but very interesting that the endos are now in this area i do wonder if they're just going to be fully roaming around the entirety of the pizza plex now but we try and sneak past them they activate interestingly they don't have red eyes anymore that's something i noticed look at the goofy dudes yeah you can see just how boarded up the daycare is very very interesting moving on now to glamrock chica ruined chica outside the glamrock uh beauty salon which if i remember correctly isn't usually an area chica can go to in the main game so once again maybe all the animatronics can fully explore the entire uh pizza plex now that'd be interesting i think a lot of people wanted that for the main game also the stealth icon has returned it's in a brand new area now it's not fully off to this corner it's a bit smaller as well but stealth has returned the stealth indicator chica has not seen us because our icon is blue hence why she is not approaching us she's uh walking away 
Uh, a bit further on in the shot, we can see a, a little panel right here, a little puzzle panel. We're going to see that in action later on. We can also see a little light device here, which, as far as I'm aware, wasn't there in the main game. So could this possibly be another device that we use? My theory is that the because the lights were all shut down in an earlier shot, right here, right? All the neon signs are down. The only reason why there's light here is because there is a giant window, you know, with sunlight beaming in. I have a theory that this device right here is going to turn on all these neon lights, and that's why it's green. Maybe when we first come to the Roxanne uh, salon, it's red, and we have to turn it on. Right here, we can see our cam stations. Uh, most likely, they have designated areas around the pizza plex. So we can't lift it up and carry it around. Because we see it right here, we also, going back, saw it right here in the daycare. It has a glowing wrench icon, which we do see on that puzzle panel in a, in a later shot. We're going to see it a bit more clearer. Uh, I just speculate this is a symbol that indicates we can interact with this item. We can use it, probably, if we have the Faz device. But yeah, this is the cam station. When we go inside, there was one single frame right here inside of Monty's Golf. I, once again, will move my camera. Monty Golf Cam 1. We get a look at Cassie interacting with the cam station, a bit of the mini-map, a brand new UI entirely for the cameras, which is absolutely crazy. It looks so much better than the main game. Right here, this is how we select our cameras. Of course, we can use these arrow keys, presumably, to get access to even more cameras, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. We can zoom in and out. We can exit. We can press escape. I'm not entirely sure what those are going to be used for, because usually Usually, those buttons do the exact same thing. Next up, we have Roxy Raceway underscore two cam one. I'd assume the underscore two means the second camera station located inside of Roxanne's Raceway. That's just my theory, but we have an intercom, which you may notice wasn't in the previous shot featuring Monty Golf, right? Nowhere to be found. Why is it only showing up with Roxanne? Could it possibly be because she's the only blind character? And we use this intercom in a very similar way to the Balloon Boy audio tracks in FNAF 3, where we maybe lure Roxanne to different areas of the raceway so we can dodge and weave our way around her. That'd be very interesting. I do think that's what this intercom is for, especially because the option only shows up for Roxanne. It would make so much sense because she's the only blind character. She has to rely on her ears, her sense of sound. But a bit more of the zoomed in minimap, same UI from last time. Again, I'll say it, Stu will love this brand new UI. It looks so much better than main game. We can see us about to select a brand new character. I mean, a brand new camera. And we do see this character actually moving around a bit. Sneaking around like the little sneaky wolf she is. This right here is inside of the Superstar GIF shop. We can tell because of this broken down daycare attendant statue. Once again, the wrench icon. My theory, this is just a symbol that indicates you can interact with this item. <laughs> Fun funnily enough, it's powered by a Fazbear Entertainment gigantic battery. But we interact with this with our Faz device. And we most likely do a little Among Us puzzle right here, if I had to take a guess. These wires right here. Do a little bit of... A little bit of Amogusing. We get our little Roxy Tox... <laughs> I forget. What are people calling it? The Roxy Toxy? <laughs> like a walkie-talkie, but Roxy Toxy. Once again, we are back in the beauty salon. You can see the mirror right here with the chairs, the checkerboard pattern, which is kind of chipping away right here. You can see a bit of a gap, possibly because the floor is collapsing in on itself and it's falling deep into the into the pit this the sinking hole pit that is the freddy fazbear's pizzeria underneath the pizzaplex which is directly under roxanne's raceway so yeah i'd assume you know this area would be the most affected by that sinkhole uh but we get cassie talking into her roxy toxie saying gregory run, gregory, run! uh fantastic voice by the way for cassie so another device we have and because we're saying gregory run Either we can see Gregory, and we can see that he's in danger somewhere, and that's why, you know, Gregory, get out of there, run. Or, the more boring answer, he's on his end of the walk, Roxy talks, and he's like, Cassie, there's a, there's a heckin', there's a heckin' dude trying to get me. And we're just like, Gregory, run, get out of there. I feel like it would be more interesting if we saw him in danger, you know? Moving on, we get a shot of the staff bot. All busted up. This is the only time we see one of the staff bots, which... I'm praying this imagery is still trying to tell us we got rid of them fuckers. <laughs> I don't think there was a single person out there who actually enjoyed the staff bots. There was way too many of them. They were freaking everywhere in the pizza plex. 
it made traversing the pizzaplex just an absolute hassle a nightmare if they are back which i mean we did again we've seen a few shots of the areas it doesn't look like we've we see any staff bot so again hopefully they're gone but if they are back still well, please i beg of you do not put that many as you put in the main game that was awful but definitely bring back map bot we got to get map bot back in here shot of monty trying to claw his way between these two panels i'm not entirely sure what this is actually it just seems like some generic office area based on the vending machine and the the cabinets but once again i do hope this is monty just kind of wandering around he sees us and he's like rawr, 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 i'm gonna get you uh or maybe this is a scripted event where he's always meant to be in this area and maybe it starts a chase scene i don't know we get that awesome shot of Cassie riding on the little, <laughs> you can tell right here, this is the Monty rides uh, above Monty Golf. And we kind of jump down, back down onto the catwalks. Not sure why we do that, not sure how we got up here even onto this ride. But what's interesting, interesting most to me, is this right here. To me, this icon screams autosave, which is so amazing i pray that's what this is there's nothing else this could be maybe a loading icon but why are you loading during a cutscene? i don't know i pray this is an autosave icon it does make you question why is it auto saving right now well i speculate we're gonna have a rematch against monty up at the catwalks that'd be fantastic i can only imagine it's it's auto saving because we're coming to such a pivotal point in the game a probably very difficult one where if we die we don't want to go all the way back to our last save, so it's auto-saving right here before a giant boss fight. Also, looking at my notes, there was a few things I neglected to mention that I thought were interesting. I want to point them out. Right here, we can actually see the direction the cameras are pointing towards. This is a first for the FNAF franchise. Originally, FNAF 1 was going to have directional cameras, but Scott ended up scrapping them for just basic buttons. But I thought that was pretty interesting. They're finally bringing back directional cameras. It shows you where they're pointing. I just thought that was pretty neat. Anyways, going back to Monty. Real quick, because Monty actually right here is our final smoking gun. <sighs> that this takes place after the Afton end. Because right here, Monty's missing his heckin' legs. He's crawling around. And we've seen Roxanne. She's all busted up. She's missing her eyes. We took Monty's legs. We took Roxanne's eyes and I'll bet you right now Chica's also missing her voice box because uh, she has the same amount of damage uh, Of course a bit more because of the collapse as she had when we destroyed her to get her voice box and all three of those uh, You know things must be met to get the Afton ending the only ending you can get all three of these characters Completely destroyed like we see them in this trailer is for the Afton ending to me That's again the smoking gun after this scene on the Monty ride we get more shots of uh, Cassie sneaking around outside of Chica's Bakery, I believe. Yeah, because the, the pattern, the lollipop swirls, the candy, candy, ice cream cone right here. We get a terrifying shot of Monty's jump scare. We can tell because there is a single frame of static somewhere right around uh, here. So it looks like they're kind of taking it uh, after that, you know, T-Jock approach, I'll say, because a lot of people have been making that connection where it's not just a boo jump scare. It's an actual like full on animation sequence, which I think is dope as hell. I'm so glad they finally incorporated like jump scare actual animations instead of just also in this shot. Besides just a cooler look at Monty. Look at that, dude. He looks so cool. We can see another one of the puzzle boxes connected to a locked closed door. So once again, wrench icon, we can interact with it, stick our FAS device in there, do some Among Us, open the door, brand new area to explore. I don't understand this shot. I'll keep it a stack. I don't know where the hell Chica's going here, <laughs> but she's going for a ride. And once again, her beak is gone. Her beak is gone. We She loses her beak. You know, when we, when we destroy her, for the afton ending to get her voice box but she's going for a ride get a shot of glam daddy he's back his foot are <laughs> are twisted around completely and it looks like he is buried underneath all of the phaser blast panels you can see a bit of their design again i'm sure if i brighten it up for you guys you can see it a bit clearer but poor glam dad 
He's all messed up. Freddy, what happened? He's, he's all messed up, looking a bit like Shattered Freddy, if I do say so myself. Something I'm curious about is if Freddy is still going to be good. I think it would be a very interesting twist if he gets out of the rubble and he's all angry and he wants to catch Gregory now. You know, he turns evil. He's not our friend anymore. He's evil, Freddy. And again, maybe we find some other companion in the form of Chica because of all the Chica imagery. Or maybe even Roxanne. Because this shot was very interesting to me. The way she catches us, right? She's got, she's got us, you know, we're done for. But this doesn't really look like a jump scare. You know, her ears go up as if she's curious about something. I don't know. Maybe this is her turning point and she's like, I can be your friend. I need some friends. I'm lonely. All my friends left because they think I look disgusting now. Also another thing to point out, her freaking eyeballs. She has the two holes that we use in the puzzle box with our Faz device that we turn it and we do the Among Us. I wonder if we can do that with Roxanne. I don't know. But next up, we get the shot everyone's freaking out about. Ruin daycare attendant. Or as everyone's praying, he's going to be called Eclipse. It has been confirmed that Kellen Goff will be voicing this guy again, which is fantastic. Kellen knocked it out of the park the first time. I think this is the uh, first time we see him, actually, just based on the little wave. This is probably our first time we, like, we'll go up, knock on the door, anyone home? And he bursts through. He's like, hey, I'm friendly right now, but because I've got a split personality thing going on where I'm half, you know, good son, half evil moon... I'm gonna welcome you into the daycare, but ooh, I'm gonna get bad real soon. And speaking of the daycare, probably the most interesting shot of the entire trailer, this mask. Now, I do want to address those people saying, oh, this takes place after the, the free Vanny ending, because at the end of that ending, we, we get the Vanny mask, you know, we see it on the floor. To that I say, does that look like the same goddamn mask that was used in Security Breach? Because it is not. It is a brand new, new and improved model from Help Wanted's Curse of Dreadbear DLC. You can tell because of the tufts of hair at the top. Now, why Cassie, presumably Cassie, we can't quite see her outfit or her nails. Unless we can here. No. Whoever we're playing as right here, I'd assume Cassie. Why do we have this mask? And why is it like this, <laughs> you know? The original Help Wanted Curse of Dreadbear Vanny Mask was not like this on the inside. Someone has technologically made this more advanced. <laughs> Freaking looks like we're about to enter the Iron Man suit. It's got, like, I don't I don't even know where to begin. I saw MatPat say this is probably a voice changer for, you know, which would explain why Vanny and Vanessa sound different. I don't know if I'm going to stretch that hard. This just looks like a bit of wires, man. <laughs> but who knows? When we put on the mask, we see clouds. We can see clouds. <laughs> what the hell is going on? I have no clue what this is for. Maybe this is like showing the corruption of Glitch Trap taking over the Pizza Plex. Because the next thing we see is this thing. Now, I do want to say this is not Glamrock Bonnie. I've seen a lot of people say, oh, this is Glamrock Bonnie. This is not Glamrock Bonnie. Because if we count and count with me now, one, a two, a three, a four, a five. That's five fingers on that boy. Five fingers to the face. And guess who doesn't have five fingers to the face? It's the Glamrock animatronics. They only have four. So this is not Glamrock Bonnie. Most likely, based on past track records of Steel Wool and these FNAF trailers, probably some new form of Afton. I've, I've seen another theory that was like, maybe this is Vanny. And when you keep the mask on too long, you become crooked corrupt and you become this amalgamation thing. I don't know about that one. That seems a bit uh, far-fetched. It would, it would also have to, we would have to be playing as Vanny in the sequence to get that to be true, which is possible, but I feel like it's probably, I don't know. I think it's just Afton, some new form of Afton, some physical form of glitch trap. I don't think it's the mimic as unfortunate as this sounds, I feel like if they're gonna properly introduce the mimic to the games, you know, through the games, I feel like they just go with the more traditional described appearance of the mimic, which is more endoskeleton-like. So yeah, that's my theory. Probably just some brand new form of Afton. whoop de doo So happy about that. He, he always comes back. Anyways, the final thing we gotta talk about is Gregory's voice line. Don't. A brand new logo, by the way, for Ruin. I'm not a fan of it. I'll keep it a stack. I think the old one was better, uh, but this one aligns a lot more. It's, you know, it's the same font with Security Breach, so it fits a bit better. But it doesn't give me that, like, dread, ruiny feel that I'm about to explore an abandoned 
giant, you know, environment with terrifying animatronic robots in the door. But anyways, Gurgury says, don't give up on me yet. Give up on me yet. Which is still old, telling all the fans who didn't like Security Breach, hey, give this one a shot. It's free DLC. You got to give it a shot. You have no excuse to not give it a shot. And then it's also coming out in July, which is a month from now. And I will say, I'm a little concerned that it's coming out next month and we don't have a release day for it yet. I'm a little nervous about that. I said this at the end of my reaction video, but I do, do truly think Steel Wool has taken their time with this DLC and they've tested the fudge out of it because Lord knows they can't mess this one up. But it is just a little worrying. It comes out in, in a month and there's no release date for it yet but hopefully it's coming out soon and who knows maybe we'll get another trailer to react and analyze but that has been johnny blocks analyzes the security breach ruin dlc gameplay trailer i'd love to know what are your thoughts and theories in the comments down below and you bet we will be playing this next month when it comes out but that's going to do it for this video thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all on the flip side goodbye